In this vlog, I talked about how I was maybe shopping for a new Nikon 1 series camera. As you may know, I've had a wonderful experience with my Nikon V1. Now, why a second 1 series camera? Originally, I bought the V1 with some hesitation, but within hours of trying it out, I was hooked. Over time, I've added several lenses, um, a speed light, this adapter to use my F-mount lenses, and I've really taken advantage of the video capabilities. In fact, despite how much I use the V1 for photography, I use it for my videos all the time. It's almost a permanent fixture here in my office, set up for video with the F-mount adapter on, and usually a prime lens or the 17 to 55 of 2.8 DX lens. What this also means is that when I want to run out the door with a camera, I'm either detaching the video setup or grabbing a DSLR when I really want something smaller and lighter. I know, I know, it's a first world problem not to have your favorite camera all ready to go. But you know what? I'm Snapchick, so when there's a will, there's a camera. I looked at a few different options. I like the upcoming Pentax Q7 that's soon to be released, and there are many Micro Four Thirds options that are great for both video and stills. Having lenses and equipment for the Nikon 1 series, though, is a very compelling reason to stick with that system. I went out on a quest to check out some of the newer Nikon 1 system options, the V2, J3, and S1. They're all really nice. The V2 is the most fully featured, and it's grown a bit from the V1. Honestly, I don't like the physical design, and yes, that's important to me. When I enjoy holding and using a camera, I use it more and I get better results. Also, I spent some time with the J3 and S1. They're really nice, and they have the same cool features as the V1 in a smaller package. One thing I like about the V1 is the ready access to the focus modes, which is in the menus on the J3 and S1. I usually think of focus mode as set and forget, but between video and still work, I most commonly find myself reaching for the autofocus control button. Also, the V1 has an amazingly good viewfinder, while the J3 and S1 are big screen only. On my V1, I typically keep the screen off, preferring the viewfinder. Oh, and the S1 and J3 don't share a battery with the V1, nor does the V2 for that matter. One thing I love about the V1 is that it uses the same battery as my D800. When I'm hauling my D800 and V1, that's super handy. So without a clear winner, I came home from my shopping trip unfulfilled. I did go to Chipotle though. Afterward, I was doing some random reading about the One Series, trying to talk myself into a purchase. I was on stevehuffmanphoto.com, which is a great site that you should check out. And he mentioned a deal that Digital Rev is running on a white V1 kit with a 10 millimeter F2.8 prime for about $275. I jumped over to Digital Rev and found the deal right away. For not much more than the price of the lens, which I've had my eye on for a while, I could get that lens plus a camera body that I already love. I ordered it right away. It's not the newest kit on the block, but it goes for fire sale prices, and I couldn't be happier with the one that I already have. Which one will I use for video and which for stills? I have no idea. <laughs> In fact, I'm sure there'll be a time when I'm just taking still photos and I have the 10 millimeter on this one and a telephoto zoom on the other, or the 10 on this one and the 18 and a half on this one, or, well, you get the picture. The Nikon One system sure has its critics. Some people don't like the sensor or the selection of lenses, but I use this system every day and I love it. In fact, one of the most frequently asked questions that I receive in email is, what camera do you use to shoot your videos? Don't get me wrong, I love working with my DSLRs, but when shooting video or when I'm on the move, packing light, but I still want great quality, these cameras really do it for me. 